Hello, welcome to Pennside Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Dave coming to you with a word of hope for today. To begin, we have a delightful new tune that David Cullen introduced to me, For Everyone Born. David. For everyone born, place at the table. For everyone born, clean water. space, a safe place for growing, for everyone born, a star overhead, and God will delight when we are creators of justice, and God will delight, compassion and peace. Justice and joy. For women and men, a place at the table, revising the roles, deciding to share. Born. 
Thank you, David. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and eternal God, you have graciously created all things. We thank you for giving us sound bodies, and for preserving us from the power of the evil foe. Help us to rightly use our ears and tongues to hear your word diligently and devoutly, and to praise you for your grace, so that no one will be offended by our words, but that all may be strengthened in faith through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson comes from Luke chapter 13. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she, sh she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day. When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things he was doing. Are you your own worst enemy? Do you get in your own way? During my senior year of high school, I decided to try out for the Governor's School of the Arts in theater. My application consisted of a short video of me doing a monologue from Tennessee Williams' The Glass Menagerie. The application deadline loomed, and yet I just couldn't get it done. I sent it in several days late. No surprise, I was not accepted. Looking back, I was my own worst enemy. I sabotaged myself. Buddha said, what we are today comes from our thoughts of yesterday, and our present thoughts build our life of tomorrow. Our life is the creation of our mind. Our thoughts have tremendous power for good and for evil. The life of the mind is a continual struggle to unlearn and overcome ways of thinking that are self-destructive and replace those thought patterns with ones that are constructive, to replace demons with angels, to stop being our own worst enemy and start being a best friend. I wonder if that is what Jesus is doing when he says to the woman, you are free. I wonder if he is inviting her and us to think about ourselves a different way, to overcome a spirit of affliction with a spirit of hope born from his love. Put yourself in her shoes for a moment. Jesus says to you, straighten up. You are free. What do you mean I'm free, Jesus? Can't you see me? Look at how bent over I am. Look at how I'm suffering. It's been like this for 18 years. Jesus, how can you say you are free? I'm not free. I'm a victim. I'm helpless. I'm suffering. And there's nothing I can do about it. Is that true? Or is there something more? Are there possibilities we haven't considered? Does Jesus see through the surface to the deeper reality, a reality our thoughts obscure? This is a curious double healing. Jesus sees this woman. He sees how she is bent over. And after telling her to straighten up, he declares, you are free. Then he lays hands on her and she straightens up. She is healed. She is healed with a word. She is healed with a touch a double healing. Why does Jesus do this? What is Jesus teaching us by healing her this way? A double healing for a double malady. Something weighed on this woman. It affected her physically. It affected her spiritually. We separate body from soul, our physical selves from our spiritual selves, but that is a byproduct of modern thought. One of the reasons for the resurgence in spiritual interest is a growing understanding that this is a false dichotomy. We're not body and soul. We're one. Body and soul are integrated. What affects one affects the other. Jesus heals this woman. Straighten up. Then he touches her. He calls her a daughter of Abraham. He restores her body and soul. He makes her whole. She can stand up straight. She has standing in the community. She can look at herself in the mirror and like what she sees. Not her worst enemy, but a good friend. 
How's your posture today? Are you standing straight, head held high? Do you like who you see in the mirror? Or is something weighing you down? Are you suffering from a spirit of affliction? You are free. God's love is greater than your sin. Jesus' death on the cross is the decisive victory of love over evil. Every time you start telling yourself those negative messages, I can't, I'm not worth it, stop, stop, stop. Jesus says to you, you are free. Tell yourself that. Turn to God in prayer. Hear God say to you, you are free. Believe that good news and straighten up. You are free. Amen. Let's pray. Loving Lord, we give you thanks. And when we, when we find ourselves weighed down, you are the one who bears the burden with us. When we find ourselves in situations where we have been our own worst enemy, you are always our best friend. And so, Lord, I pray for all of those who find themselves this day feeling weighed down in body and spirit, who feel that the burdens that they bear are more than they can bear, who wonder how they can ever keep going. And I pray, Lord, that they would hear your good news, that they would feel your loving presence, and know that in your grace and in your mercy and in your love, what is worst about us is not what endures about us, what endures is your love. What endures is your grace. What endures is who we are in you, a beloved child of God. Oh Lord, help us all to believe that this day and straighten up and live in freedom. We ask this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May you be blessed. May God free you from the weight on your shoulders. May Jesus deliver you from negative self-talk. May the Holy Spirit give you the grace to accept that you are loved. And may you be blessed in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thanks for watching.